Okay, hi there. Uh, some of the main advantages and uh, potential disadvantages of the market structure known as oligopoly uh, are going to be explored in this short video. And we will also consider three examples of an it depends on evaluation argument that you might want to use in your economics papers. Uh, be prepared to use analysis diagrams to help you where useful. But this video on the advantages and disadvantages of oligopoly is diagram free. A word or two very quickly about the key characteristics of oligopoly. Important to know these. It tends to be a market dominated by a few firms. So there's a small number of sellers, each giving some seller market power. It tends to be a high concentration ratio. The top five firms typically have more than 60% of the market. Each firm supplies branded, differentiated products and they're also assumed to be quite high barriers to entry and exit. Crucially, uh, behaviour, strategic decisions by firms are interdependent. You have to think about the likely reaction of your rivals to a change in price or advertising or investment spending. And this means there is ever present uncertainty about actual business behaviour in an oligopoly. A couple of examples of oligopolistic markets in the UK. Here's the cinema exhibitor chains, the leading three cinemas, Cineworld, Odeon and View together accounted for 69% of the market in 2017. Of course, Cineworld has also recently bought Picture House. So this is clearly an oligopoly with three firms essentially dominating the market. And here's some very up-to-date information on the share of the leading smartphone models sold in Britain in April 2019. Well, an, olig an oligopoly, yes, but actually in many ways a duopoly with Apple and Samsung uh, in, in April taking the biggest share of the leading five uh, models of mobile phone. OK, so the purpose of this video is to take you through essentially four arguments for oligopoly and four arguments against. So have your revision notes handy. Uh, let's see what we can come up with. So what are the main potential advantages of oligopoly from the point of view of consumers? We could consider other stakeholders, but this video will focus on consumers. The first point I want to make is that in a competitive, non-collusive oligopoly, oftentimes you get price wars between rival firms which causes prices to fall, and that increases consumer surplus, a good concept you can use. Uh, secondly, the ever-present battle for market share often leads to high levels of spending on research and development, which can then improve uh, inv invention, innovation, so-called dynamic efficiency. My third point is that in an oligopoly, the big firms, the established dominant businesses, they can exploit internal economies of scale, which then lead to a fall in the unit cost. And in theory, that can be passed on to consumers in the form of lower prices in the long term, again, benefiting their real incomes. And a fourth point is a fiscal point that uh, typically in an oligopoly, the dominant firms make high abnormal or supernormal profit and that profit of course can be taxed and could be a source of revenue for a government to help fund key public services such as education and health. So there we go there's four potential advantages of oligopoly for consumers and here are one or two examples of price wars recently in the grocery sector in the online streaming market, cinemas, the mortgage market and other, other good examples there. A couple of valuation points worth uh, picking out. First of all, price wars do not necessarily benefit all customers. It depends on the range or the extent and the scale of the price war. And secondly, of course, there are some dangers for consumers from a price war, particularly if it leads to some firms leaving the market, making it even more concentrated, concentrated than it was before. Anyway, hopefully you've then picked up their four potential advantages from oligopoly. Now what are four potential disadvantages of oligopoly for consumers? Again, there are many you could choose. I've just picked out 
four points. The first is, of course, there is the danger, the risk, some would say the likelihood of cartel behavior, collusive oligopoly, some sort of price fixing or market sharing form of collusion, which leads ultimately to higher prices, prices well above marginal and average cost, which causes a lot of allocative efficiency. And typically high prices, of course, they tend to hurt low income families, low income households more than most. So you can talk about collusion having a regressive effect on income inequality. My second point is that a high concentration ratio in the market, the domination of just a few firms tends to limit consumer choice. And if the barriers to entry are particularly high, that might deter innovative smaller firms from making a profitable entry. My third point is about some of the dangers of very highly persuasive, occasionally misinformed advertising. So persuasive marketing and advertising can often manipulate preferences and therefore distort the allocation of uh, the allocation of resources and the functions of the price mechanism. My fourth point is that although many oligopolies make high profits, uh, often operating in a transnational way, operating in many different markets across countries, uh, lots of them don't actually pay much in the form of tax, particularly if they avoid paying tax through techniques such as shadow pricing. That would mean the government gets less money. So there we go, some disadvantages from oligopoly. Um, the advertising is quite important. These are the biggest advertising spenders in the UK in 2017. Sky and BT and Procter & Gamble, Virgin, L'Oreal, Amazon, Unilever. Most of these uh, big advertisers typically are in oligopolistic markets. And that tells us that non-price competition is important. There's a big issue about the effectiveness of advertising and whether it's economically efficient to have it. So we've been through four advantages and four potential disadvantages of oligopoly. Just to finish off, this is my final slide. I just want to take you through three it depends on evaluation points. So the question, is oligopoly good for consumers? Well, uh, the arguments you can make a case for saying are, rather like this egg, finely balanced. First of all, it depends on the objectives of the businesses in an oligopoly. And the objectives, are they going for profit maximization or revenue maximization or sales maximization? Those objectives influence their behavior, influences their pricing, their output decisions, their investment decisions, which clearly then impact on consumers. So the objectives determine in part the behavior. The second really key depends on point is the extent to which even an oligopoly with a small number of dominant firms is actually contestable. How easy is it for very small firms to come in and really start to tackle and, and uh, challenge the existing firms? Sometimes if you have a contestable oligopoly, you have both the threat of competition and actual competition that can lead to much more uh, efficient outcomes from the point of view of the consumer. And my third point, is that most oligopolies are in some shape or form regulated by an industry adjudicator, a regulator, a statutory body. And so the impact, the outcome depends on the effectiveness of industry regulation, for example, in preventing and tackling instances and allegations of anti-competitive behavior. I always say this point as part of evaluation, but on a micro market structure question, it's important to consider each industry or each market on a case by case basis. Don't automatically jump to conclusions based on what the textbook theory says. If you can consider some of the evidence to judge what the actual outcomes in a market are. OK, there we go. Um, hopefully a useful video diagram for a video looking at some of the advantages and disadvantages of oligopoly.